then, yeah, I got a new pool. Why don't you head over today? Okay, see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, Aaron. You got a new pool? Cool. I'll be over in just a bit. Oh, it's really nice. I even got this cool ladybug towel just for the occasion. Let's go see it. I can't wait to get in the water. Aaron, this isn't what I had in mind when you asked me over for your new pool. Hi. Welcome to Cheesehead Gardening with Aaron and Jen and some little helpers today. Today we're going to show you how to clean up your garden like with daffodils, tulips, mums, um, mums, asters. Yeah, great. So uh, here we go. Hey Aaron, what are you doing back there in that corner? <laughs> um, these are my asters. They're purple asters. I think they're called the New England asters. They are. And um, we're showing you how to trim things such as the asters that um, they won't flop over when they get too tall. So we're gonna trim them. Um, you can do anywhere from half the height or less. And sometimes that'll help thicken it up and uh, be nice and pretty. So let's head over to the ball plant and I'll show you the same. Hey, so here we are, Rocky and I, and these all were my purple and orange tulips in the spring. And I usually wait until they die like this, and then we cut them right down to the ground. You want to wait because all the food in the stem and the leaves go back into the bulb, um, and that will help it grow better for next year. So you can cut it right down to the ground and clean it up. Hey Erin, while I'm standing here, I'm seeing that you have some like old CDs laying around in your garden. And um, These are supposed to scare the chipmunks away. And uh, it helps probably just a little bit, but um, they get used to it and it doesn't bother them after a while. And everybody knows, you know, chipmunks like music. <laughs> yeah. Jen, why is that bush moving? I don't know. I think there's a giant chipmunk in there. Chipmunk? Let me see. Ah! <laughs> That's no chipmunk. <laughs> okay, Zoe and I are over here by the daffodils. And um, one thing that I like to tell people is when the daffodils are spent, the flower, they get a little uh, ball kind of on the top. And then what you really should do is snap that ball off with your fingers and discard it or compost it because the food goes and makes that ball bigger and bigger from the plant. And you really want the food to go back in the bulb, not up here. So also, so they don't look so um, scraggly and nasty sometimes I will um, put them together so they actually look like a prettier plant and then once they're spent like these right here they're almost they're almost dead like you can see they're brown and this part of the plant is pretty much dead what I like to do is pretty much then just cut them down to the bottom and clean them up and then I can throw this part on my compost pile I see you have a new step stool or kneeling pad there. Yes, I do. I believe it's a hosta. <laughs> you know a lot about hostas, don't you? I think you, that's hosta abuse. Don't get hostile with me. <laughs> no. All right, hey, so here's some mums right here. And when they get all scraggly looking like this, um, especially before 4th of July, here's some old debris. Anyway, you should cut them down about half the size because then they'll get thicker and they won't be so scraggly. So you just kind of give it a haircut and it looks pretty brutal, but I'm gonna leave it like that and it will actually thicken up and then the flowers won't be so tall and scraggly. And here are actually new ones, but they, it should be a thicker plant like this. And even these, I could give it just a little bit of a haircut. This one isn't as tall and scraggly and just cut kind of the tip so it's thicker like that. Right. It's never too early to start thinking about mums and planting your mums. Hey Jen, what are you doing over there? Well, I was looking at these lilac bushes 
because as you can see, they've been done blooming here. And uh, that's some really good English that I have there too. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, these have been, the blooms on them are, are, are dead. So this is the perfect time to trim this lilac tree. Usually about two weeks after the flowers have died off is when you want to trim it. And usually you're starting to look for um, the older wood, and I usually have the new stock too. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do, but that's what I do. And um, by trimming it now, you're actually helping to promote um, the blooms for spring for the next year. Because if you cut them in fall, then they won't bloom the next year usually if you give it a really bad haircut in fall. So it's usually right after they finish blooming, about two weeks after the flowers are dead, that you should try uh, trimming your lilac trees and bushes. Great. Um, so did you just clip that? Because that's my neighbor's tree. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Well, that was another episode of Cheesehead Gardening. And uh, next time, we don't go swimming, maybe we should just go to the lake. Yeah, sorry about that, Jen. Or the Nina Pool. <laughs> um, I hope that you learned something and do a little spring cleanup of your garden. Have a good have a good week. Hey Erin, the the delphiniums in my yard do the same thing. Like just as they're about to bloom, and we, although we did have a lot of rain, they all seem just they snap fall like over. That. Yeah, I know these are like almost seven feet tall, and usually they haven't gotten this tall, but this year, as soon as they got nice and tall then they flopped over and they're so gorgeous but yeah I don't know what to do about that because mine do the same thing yeah well maybe if any of you out there know how to solve this problem you can email us and tell us how to fix this so we don't have um, flopping delphinium sounds good <laughs>